When you start Artist 3 for the first time from a fresh install, by default, Example 3 workspace will be loaded. If however you are working on a system that has already been set up, you may be presented with a screen similar to this. Don't panic, this is the operator view. We will cover it later, but for now, if you press Ctrl and N, you should return back to the main Artist programming environment. Now before we continue, it's important to point out that Artist 3 has a means of restricting access to elements of the system and the workspace. These are known as the security schemes. You can see the currently applied security scheme by clicking File and Security Scheme. There are four levels, Installer, Programmer, Operator and Monitor. And while they have been set up by default with different elements locked out, they are totally configurable by the person setting them up. Throughout these tutorials I will be using the Installer Security Scheme as this gives access to all the functions of the software. As such, if you are working on a pre-programmed system, it is very likely a security scheme may have been applied to protect the setup and programming, resulting in a number of the buttons and functions you see on my screen being greyed out or not appearing at all. If this is the case, contact the programmer or installer of your system. If for any reason you have a system that has been locked and the programmer or installer cannot be reached, contact Showcad support for further advice. OK, let's talk about the interface. This is the default layout of the main programming interface. Sections can be rearranged to personal preference by clicking and dragging on the title bars. If yours is arranged differently, you can return it to the default by clicking Window and Default Docking. You can also switch on and off sections by clicking the buttons here or again by clicking Window and clicking on the section's names. In the centre of the screen is the main window. This is a context sensitive window. By that I mean its function and look change depending on what we are doing at the time. Along the bottom we have a number of tabs, at the moment fixtures, scenes and queues. More tabs will appear down here as we do things like open the templates file to patch fixtures or write MIDI patches and timecode scripts. Clicking on the tabs changes the view of the main screen. Fixtures represent all of the patched DMX devices on your rig and allows you to select them individually or in multiples. We can go through the different groups of fixtures by clicking the drop down at the top of the window. As you can see, Artist 3 can visually display the fixtures in a number of different ways. This allows you to lay out your fixtures virtually on the screen to help represent their real world positions. The buttons next to the drop down are grouping shortcuts that we'll cover in depth in a later tutorial. The Scenes and Cues tabs may look very similar to each other, but they both function in different ways. Again, we will cover this in depth later. The drop down at the top now allows us to run through the different Scene and Cue lists. To the left of the main window is the Master window. Again, this is a tab window giving us access to Programming Control, where we can save and update cues, scenes and steps. Time Control, where we can trigger time-coded and real-time clock events. List Control, which acts as a local master for the currently selected queue list. And Global Control, which is an overall brand master for the system. Below this is the Palette window. The Palette window gives fast shortcuts to fixture attributes whilst programming. Again, it is tabbed into Colour, Brush or Gobo, Focus and Beam. The Colour and Brush tabs relate to shortcuts set up in fixture templates. The Focus and Beam tabs are customisable. To the right is the Fixture Control window. This is where we can control all the different attributes of our patched fixtures. The first tab, Parameters, lets us set static values for any attribute. Effects allows us access to Artist 3's Effects Engine and apply the output to any of the fixture attributes. Fanning lets us easily spread the values of attributes across a number of different fixtures between set ranges. 
and finally Chase lets us run pre-built patterns on attributes and apply modifiers to them. Going right again, we have the status window. The audio tab lets us monitor the audio signal coming into artistry and adjust settings to give us accurate sound to light response and BPM detection. The notes tab gives us context sensitive area to write any notes we may require. This is per tab and per group on the main window. And the output tab lets us monitor the DMX levels being sent and received by Artist3, particularly useful for troubleshooting and fault finding. And finally, we have the navigator window. While it has a very simple looking tree structure, this is actually one of the most powerful sections of Artist3, as you will come to find out in future tutorials. The resources tab lets you set up everything that interfaces with Artist3. DMX USB boxes, Artnet, sound inputs, external triggers, MIDI devices, time code files, etc. are all configured and patched within this tab. The fixture tab lets you delve into and make changes to fixtures at an individual parameter level. Very useful if you have a particular fixture that is not functioning properly. Lastly, the scenes and queue tabs allow you to dissect individual scenes and queues and make changes to individual attributes. There are also two other windows we can open. The operator screen, as seen earlier, acts as a more user-friendly shortcut to the queues list on the main window, helping reduce confusion on screen while operating the show. The buttons are purposely oversized so that touch screens can be used with the window, giving a simple intuitive control surface. It is highly configurable and there will be a whole tutorial dedicated to setting up the operator interface. The theatre window has been provided to give a conventional desk-like interface. It gives the programmer fast access to fixture parameters and programming controls from one single screen. Personally it is not a window I make much use of as I find it quicker and easier to program using alternative methods but you may find it works for you so have a play with it and see what you think. If you are unsure about any part of the interface, context sensitive help can be found about all sections by pressing the F1 key. That's pretty much the entire interface. Don't worry if you don't understand any of the concepts used, such as the difference between scenes and cues yet, as these will be covered in a later tutorial. Next time I'm going to show you how to patch your output interfaces so that Artist3 can send DMX data to your fixtures. Wow. <laughs>